What is the best defensive stratagem in Helldivers 2? These are your green stratagems that drop a small mechanical apparatus to aid you in combat. They might rain down mortars from the sky, shoot thousands of bullets into your enemies, or shock everything in sight. Taking these on every single mission isn't always advised. However, more specialized tasks, such as defend missions, are made trivial by these clunky helpers. One distinction about them is that almost all are terrible for the robots. In fact, only a few are even usable there as they get shot down way too quickly. Amazing for plugging up bug breaches, but do be careful when taking them out against the automatons. With that in mind, let's rank every defensive stratagem in Helldivers 2 from worst to best. The incendiary mines drop a pod down from the sky that releases out into a wide circle. The pod in the center then serves to draw enemy attention so that they walk towards it into the mines and blow up. The incendiary mines in particular explode setting targets on fire. Overall, worthless against bots, but will at least do something against the bugs. Sadly, this has no advantage over any of the other defensive stratagems, mainly due to this being a passive stratagem, rather than an active one. Many defensive stratagems actively work to assist you in taking down enemies. The mines have the same cooldown as active stratagems, but sit there doing nothing until the enemy walks over them. And I'll be honest, you're going to take out your teammates with these more than you're going to take out bugs. I've dropped this onto a breach before just for all of the bugs that walk through unscathed. Highly inconsistent and blocks off a massive area you and your team cannot retreat to. These also seem to be way worse than the regular mines that simply explode. Mainly because DOT damage or damage over time in this game just feels really weak. Considering how this minefield even works, it should have its cooldown cut in half. Right now, it is useless, as anything is better in its place. F tier. The anti-personal minefield is the same item we just talked about, but this one explodes more. Honestly, it's not all that clear how different these two items are, as both are just as ineffective as the last and seem to throw out mines in the same manner. Bots will always fly in more troops away from the mines, so once again, kind of worthless for them. Bugs, however, do tend to get blown up by these. Just a bit better than the fire ones because you get instant damage versus the weak damage over time, and all the negatives still stay in place though. These always land far closer than you think they're going to, making them a high liability and they don't do enough at all. Again, both items just don't make sense. If you have a stratagem that is half as effective as a turret, then it should have much lower cooldown to give it something in return. Best way I can find to use these is to chuck them behind you constantly so they cover your backside and never interfere with progress. That is till a charger runs through them, taking no damage whatsoever and just clearing the mines for the horde with him. F tier. The machine gun sentry drops down an automated machine gun. This targets nearby enemies and shoots them down. It has a limited supply of ammo and will simply disappear or disassemble once it runs out. Especially lately, this has become a very useful item. The devs greatly increase the number of basic enemies in response to a reduction in tank-based enemies. So now you really need to clear out hunters quickly. If well placed, this can clear out half of a breach, if not all of it, depending on difficulty. Not really useful on bots as it doesn't do quite enough and they shoot it down way too fast, but having this decent cooldown, it might stop swarms from getting to you over and over throughout a single mission. Do be careful though, as this item will not distinguish you from a crowd. Stand in front of it and the enemies, and you're gonna go down with them. Now, the reason this item is lower on the list is I'm not even sure why it exists. We have another version that seems to shoot twice as fast and thus defeat enemies far quicker. I tested extensively and really cannot figure out if this has any benefit over the Gatling Sentry. So on its own, a great assist to combat but when compared not something you're ever going to use except maybe to double up on turrets but there aren't many missions where that would be a good idea d tier the Rocket Sentry is the most overrated defensive stratagem that we have available. This thing is made out to be the best option and really does not do what it says. The description states a powerful automated turret effective against armored targets will primarily aim at larger targets. If we're going to be given a fast moving sentry to aim at the largest target on the map, why is it unable to defeat any of the larger targets? Once again, this will get shot down by the bots before doing anything, so not for them. Take it out on bugs and it prioritizes chargers and bile titans, which guess what? It doesn't do any damage to either of them. I'm serious, we had two of these down versus one bile at one point and he was just standing there. Two of them were never able to take it down. We had to actually defeat it ourselves. What's the point of an item that targets things it can't defeat? Against the chargers, the ammo simply doesn't penetrate their armor. 
What this is good for is clearing out medium-sized targets. Having a very nice amount of ammo, it's going to clear bile spewers well and brood mothers with ease. Also, I don't really think this team kills at all. The autocannon blasts your team in one second if you let it, but this can shoot right next to you and do almost nothing. All fine and dandy until it starts shooting the target it literally doesn't take out. At the moment, the autocannon is way better than this against bugs. D tier. The HMG emplacement is a turret. This lets you hop into the saddle, so to speak, and start mowing down hordes with a really large supply of ammo. Not only does this take out enemies very quickly, but it sounds ridiculously satisfying with this nice dug, 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 dug behind each shot. If you need to extract and are getting pushed from one side, this can make all the difference. And sometimes you can find these out in the field, which is pretty neat. Some of those defense missions have high spots enemies rarely reach, and if you finagle an HMG onto there, you can have a lot of fun. But once again, we see a massive in balance for this item. Most defensive stratagems have 180 seconds for their cooldown. Most defensive stratagems are active and shoot on their own, letting both it and you deal damage at the same time. This is yet another passive stratagem that does nothing unless you make it. On top of that, you become a sitting duck the second you step into the apparatus. No armor to protect you whatsoever, and if you don't get the horde fast enough, you are done. It's also very ineffective against chargers and biles, so the second one shows up, they end you. And finally, we have the biggest downside, that being the turn speed. This thing physically cannot turn almost at all. Oh, you can do a complete 360, but it's going to take you four days to do so. The devs heavily nerfed this item for no reason whatsoever. What would even be bad about this thing turning faster? You're still a sitting duck, except now you can actually use your two guns that would work in any direction. The HMG needs a slightly lower cooldown at 100 or 120 seconds and should be able to turn two times, three times, maybe even four times times faster. Amazing for trashing bunches of bugs, but way overbalanced to the point that they're actively nerfing its potential. C tier. The Tesla Tower is basically a more active lightning rod. Once down, it stands up into a single rod that protrudes electrical current. Anything near this will be taken out in one arc and it chains to several opponents, making it very, very strong. Funnily enough, in the in-game video they show you how to use this, it has a Helldiver standing there watching the thing, and at that exact distance, it'll actually arc to you and kill you. Because yeah, this is a very strong item, but you cut off a huge section of the map once it's placed. A single zap can not only take you out, but all of your team that it arcs to from hitting you. So how on earth do you even use this if the team kill potential is so high? Against the bugs only, but mainly this is for defense missions. Because if you're actively moving from location to location, it'll get you far too easily. However, if you're staying put, defending various objectives, then it clears half of the enemies, making your work way easier. Plus, since it pulls enemies in, you can ignore an entire area that you know is covered, all except the charger problem. Chargers do actually take good damage from these, but it's not enough. Anytime one shows up, it's going to rush your tower and destroy it in seconds. The tower should at least give a little stun on these guys, giving you enough time to take them out. Because right now, the towers are simply gone as soon as they show up. Same with Bile Titans for that matter. The good thing is Bile Spewers get taken out fast, and with the 150 second cooldown, it usually recharges before it runs out if it doesn't get broken. When used correctly, it's a highly valuable tool. Might be a good idea to throw on the new Arc Resistant Armor, since again, one random jolt you didn't see coming will ruin your day. B Tier. The Mortar Sentry plops down and starts shooting out these large explosive mortars. What's really cool about this item is it has way more range than you think it does, simply exploding groups and larger targets from miles away. There's no better item for clearing out groups as this has an absurd amount of ammo. Funnily enough, this is one of the very few items designed for automatons instead of bugs, because bugs will always try to get close and melee you, while many of the bots shoot at a distance. Bugs getting close means those mortars, they land right on top of your head, and well, they do all of your health. You can throw this down behind a rock where it won't get shot and have it obliterate everything inside a single bot base. Most will know this item for its effectiveness against kill missions where you need to just get bunches of kills in order to extract. The bot levels let you summon four of these with a full team and do almost nothing. They really do put in that much work. My one and only issue with these is that you really need to communicate with your team if you bring them on regular missions. Anytime you place one down, the entire team needs to hear, I'm throwing down a mortar, or at least see that in the chat, because everyone needs to be out of the way or it's going to destroy your teammates. Then once the bots are cleared out, you break the mortar so it doesn't team kill anymore and move 
open to do the objective. This is an invaluable tool and even on the most dire missions it might save your butt. But communication is key and don't ever use them for the bugs. You're asking to die over and over if you do. B tier. And the Gatlin Sentry is the upgraded version of the Machine Gun Sentry. It's basically a minigun turret, shooting extremely fast and wiping the screen clean of bugs. Having just one of these on a bug mission can make the experience so much better. It turns quickly and gets really high kill streaks with minimal effort. The main problem it has is chargers try and take it out quick. Thankfully, getting one on top of a rock or using the jump pack to place it down in a good spot helps minimize that issue, but that won't always be an option. This item actually feels pretty good with a 180 second cooldown. Every other engagement, you have that turret, and if you're really in that much of a bind, you simply run away as it takes attention off of you, and gets rid of the crowds. Once again, kinda tough, and teams as one wrong turn has it deleting your best friend. But you can also clamber up on top and stand over the gun. This prevents it ever taking you out and gives you a nice high spot to use things like the arc gun, or protect it from chargers with a recoilless rifle. I really enjoy having this around, and while it can die quickly, it might also crush whatever you need crushing. Placing this down on top of a really big bug nest is nice, since it can trash all the little stuff as you explode the bug holes. Actually a great strategy if you bring the auto cannon or grenade launcher with you for quick clears. A tier. The auto cannon sentry is what any sophisticated person might call frickin' awesome. This item, while turning very slowly and taking longer to target enemies, is the best turret-based sentry that we have available, mainly because it's anti-tank. It not only defeats chargers very quickly, but stuns them on shots, preventing those clunky behemoths from taking the cannon down. Get this up high and you have the anti-charger solution. While it doesn't initially delete biles, it does deal very solid damage to them, enough for you to finish one off or wait it out. And on top of that, it deals with medium-sized enemies quicker than anything else, even blasting smaller bugs if they're grouped together. This, when correctly positioned, will change how you handle bugs and might change your loadouts completely. It's actually the only turret-based sentry usable against the automatons as it can really mess up melee units and help deal with hulks. Still, the problem of it blowing up far too quickly from tank shots, tower fire, and simple infantry bullets, but at times it doesn't hurt to have it around. Still way better for bugs because its ability to destroy chargers is unmatched. Only thing that prevents this from being an S tier is the massive team kill potential it brings. Bugs really like to be as close as possible to you, and if there are no tanks in the area, your autocannon will not hesitate to explode you alongside that one teeny bug you didn't see. Another item you need to make your team aware of when using. Oh, and man, this thing's long ranged. On more rocky missions, you can get this so high it defends almost longer than the mortar sentries can. I think Jump Pack, Arc Thrower, and Auto Cannon Sentry would give you some really nice equipment to help your team in almost any mission. The Auto Cannon remains one of my favorite sentries in the game, as it actually feels like I'm attacking rather than defending myself. A tier. The Shield Generator Relay is heavily underutilized in the Helldiver community, to the point where I rarely see this, but every single person should have it on for all bot missions. A 90 second cooldown means it can be used far more often than most other stratagems. And with two people running them, you have a shield anytime you need one. With four people running them, you can stay protected the entire time you're fighting the bots. Now you can technically use this to have Bile Titans spit on themselves for an instant free win. Seems like a waste as the strategy is hit or miss, and then you also have an item that does nothing for the rest of the bugs. No, this is mainly a bot mission item, but boy is it good there. Because the thing about the automatons is they're only a problem when you can't find cover. Have a little cover and you can slowly peek to take out each target, but some of those maps lock you down in areas where there's almost no cover, especially when the tanks come out to play. While the shield doesn't last all that long, it is enough time to get a risky resupply, aim more carefully at a hulk, or grenade that tank behind a pile of soldiers. This item is insane and completely changed how the automatons feel for me and my team. Before, they felt impossible on even level 5 and 6, but now higher levels are much more doable. The one thing I hate is that this item really needs a health bar on your HUD or at least a sound indication of when it will run out. At the current time, you might be perfectly safe and then get a rocket to the face just as the thing goes down. Some sort of, oh hey, this large helpful bubble is going away would be really nice. Regardless, this is such a powerful tool that I never see enough people use. S tier. 
And now for the single best defensive stratagem in Helldivers 2, we have the EMS Mortar Sentry. When an item that completely trivializes half the game, well here you go. This drops down a mortar that, like I mentioned earlier, has some crazy range. And rather than shooting explosive pods out, it shoots an EMS field. Once it hits the ground, anything inside is just shut down. It can't move at all, letting you place more accurate shots or run away entirely. The downside of the EMS Orbital is that it lasts a long time, but is only usable every so often. Once correctly placed, this item pelts enemies with EMS over and over, never letting them get back up and run towards you. The field itself only lasts a few seconds, but it's going to be applied many times over. A single person running this means you have much more leeway in fights both against bugs and bots. Two people running this means everything is shut down 100% of the time. The one issue is that some of the bigger stuff is not affected, so bile titans still move around and they might go for this precious item. If you're ready, however, you can stop this. Also, bringing a mech is pretty cool here, as mechs are not affected by the EMS, letting you easily move around still. And yeah, the EMS field also slows you, but the thing is, it doesn't kill you. So it might be annoying at times, but by no means is it a deal breaker. And the pros far outweigh most stratagems from other categories as well. Freezing enemies in place, especially when most of them spawn in packs or come out in a single breach, is really, really useful. You can see the difference when your team has this and when you don't, especially now that groups are filled with way more enemies. With rockets headshotting charges, you line up shots and never miss. This is not only the best defensive stratagem, but one of the best stratagems in the game, always adding something and never providing so much team kill potential that it feels hard to use. S tier. And there you have every defensive stratagem in Helldivers 2 ranked from worst to best. These are actually my favorite stratagems. Being a huge fan of minion based gameplay, this lets you summon turrets, rocket sentries, and shields that not only help me, but might defend my team as well. In dangerous missions on enemy territory, the thing you want most is more bullets flying towards the other side, and these give you that in a glorious manner. Just be careful which ones you pick depending on the planet and assignment, and avoid mines if at all possible since they're very poorly implemented. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.